Hi everybody, I am Jessica, the Book Rock Goddess, and I'm here to do a wrap-up video for March. And basically what I'm going to do is give you an overview of each book that I've read so Jade and I aren't going to film our wrap-ups together, I don't think, anymore. Just because I want to do a review type wrap-up and I don't really know what she's going to do with her wrap-ups, but I have nine books. I'm going so to make them on my own channel. Yeah, she says she's going to make them on her own channel. So it's just going to be a little different just because that way we don't spend as much time because my wrap-up, I've already tried to film this umpteen times and it's already been over 15 minutes. So I'm going to try to do it again. So anyway, so it isn't so long. I will start. My first book is Tiger, Tiger by Kirsten Hamilton. And I loved this book. I actually listened to, listened to it on audio, and it um, it was just awesome. It combined Irish folklore, it had goblins, it had um, the it was based in New York. You had Central Park. You had all these things, all these great elements in this book. What is the name of that movie with um, um, the singer Bowie, David Bowie? That's, that's your one of your favorite movies. The Labyrinth? Labyrinth. This has got a lot of, not, maybe not a ton of similarities, but this has a lot of similarities to The Labyrinth. This Tiger, Tiger. I could see the the simila similarities because somebody quoted that. And after reading the book or listening to the book, I could definitely see where there was similarities. Instead of the little brother being kidnapped, the father is. It, you know, and there's just so many... The Goblin Kings. There's just so much in this book that I just absolutely, absolutely enjoyed this particular book. And I'm kind of a geek that way where I love the Irish accents. I love the Irish folklore. So it was awesome. Anyways, I gave it four out of five. And that was just because it's the first book in a series. And I also, um, I didn't really read it. I listened to it. So, but it was still really good. My next book that I will definitely probably be at the top of my um, books for uh, for the year well, is um, Gabrielle, Gabrielle Zevin's All These Things I've Done. And this book is basically a mafia type of a book, but it's dystopian mafia because chocolate and outlaw, uh, chocolate and caffeine have been outlawed. You can't have it, blah, 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 all, for whatever reason the government finds it to be you know, bad and corruptive and whatever. So it's kind of a supply and demand. This girl's family, um, their family owned chocolate factories. And now that it's been outlawed, it like just jacks up. Yes, it just brings, brings up the price. Kind of like bootleggers. When you couldn't, uh, moonshiners, you couldn't drink alcohol. There was a supply and demand. Hello. We'll, we'll make it. We'll bring it. You know, they, the, they took the risk. You had to pay, of course, the higher price, but it was available. So basically, that's what it is. She's kind of the princess of this chocolate empire, and um, the book is kind of centralized around her. And I never, never felt that the book was moving slow or the plot line was um, kind of dull or stupid or anything like that. I found it to be absolutely fascinating. I thought it took like elements from like the book um, uh, Uncommon Criminal. I felt like it kind of like took elements of that and it took some other elements. And I know there were some parts that people didn't like about it because of the girl's best friend, which I didn't care for her best friend because of some of the parts in the book, um, some of the dumb things I felt she did and kind of the disloyal things she did. But I will say that is a high school thing to do. Um, Friends, you know how they say bros over hoes? That never happens. It never happens. Even as an adult, it never happens. There is always some dumb girl out there. Even though the guy is awful to you, she is going to change him and, you know, make him better. And there is always that dumb friend or that dumb girl, no matter what this guy has done, is going to stand up and say, ooh, you know, I can make him better. So the book was believable. I enjoyed it. And, again, I gave it five stars. And I cannot wait for the next one. I can't wait to see where this sits, where this author is going to take this series. Because it was fantastic. Um, my next book was 
is a library book and which has to go back, but I want it in uh, for my own because I gave this five out of five. It's a contemporary book, but again, it was a book that I could see at, see happening. I'm not a huge contemporary fan, and for me to give a book five stars, uh, being um, not a huge fan of it, it has to be fantastic, and this was absolutely fantastic. I could so relate to this girl. I could so see um, if I was give it, given that situation, if I was put in her place, I could see myself maybe doing the same thing she did. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think she, it was just her growing and she was put in a lot of difficult situations and a lot of things happen. And, um, because of that, she learned, she grew and she's a teenager, you know, teenagers do these things. Hell, adults do these things. This book was just freaking fantastic. The family dynamics were fantastic. I loved the, the way the dysfunctionalness just shows how, so many families are and you know maybe in a more elaborate way but this book hits home in so many ways I absolutely enjoyed it it is probably will be my number one contemporary of the year unless I read something better than this this will be my number one contemporary for the year I loved it so if you guys got anything that you like better and think I should read that's contemporary let me know because I, this book was just awesome so, anyways, um, oh, and it's written in verse, too, by for you guys. So it, it goes pretty quick, even though it's kind of thick. It does go pretty quick. Um, but, I mean, don't don't speed through it, because this book is one of those that you just want to devour and take your time and just, like, oh, it just sits, you just sit there going, wow. After you're done reading it, it's just, wow. <laughs> I loved it. I, I don't even know what to say. My next book is one of my favorite series of all time, and that is Lily St. Crow's Strange Angel series, and this is the fifth book, Reckoning, and final book. And it ended the way I think it should have. A lot of people were disappointed in the ending, and I have to say I wasn't. I think it ended the way it should, and I think um, Miss Crow left the door open for a spinoff series because she introduced the other part of um, Drew's heritage, the other part of her family, um, her, her bloodline, basically. And um, she brings that in. And, of course, this series has to end because somebody, something has to happen to the, the bad guy. Something has to happen for the series to end. And things have to end. The bad guy either has to live, die, or kill someone. So, basically... Or change you know there's no ins and betweens so once that storyline is taken care of which it ended nicely and I think it, it it did the book justice the series justice but um it left doors open for a spin-off series dealing with Drew's other side of her heritage and I love that I love the fact that maybe I'll be able to see more of Drew in the future so I gave this five out of five. I loved it, and I'm so hoping that she decides to explore Drew's other side. And anybody who hasn't read this series, check it out. If you like paranormal, this is definitely a series you'll love, or urban fantasy. You'll love to sink your teeth into it. It's so good. Um, another book I, I loved was um, Stutter, Smoke, and Bone. Amazing series. Um, tons and tons of twists and turns. I thought it would be, it, it was totally not what I expected it to be. I thought more of a Tooth Fairy-ish type of thing because I had heard so much of it. Oh, my gosh. I was so pleasantly surprised. Love this book. I gave it 4 out of 5. And the only reason why I gave it 4 out of 5 is because it's the beginning of a series. It has so much more room to grow. It it can only go, I mean, hopefully, in my mind, Lanny Taylor hopefully will just keep going up with this series because I think it's amazing already and I think it can be even more spectacular. It is just really, really good. And it's one of those series that has, you think one thing and it turns out to be another and you're like, oh wow, I did not see that coming. But I'm so glad it did happen. You know, it's not, it's never disappointing and I really, really enjoyed it. So four out of five stars, definitely one that I wished I would have read sooner because I'm thinking, why did I put that off? Okay, another one is um, five out of five. This one is um, another favorite author, Kim Harris. She Harrison, uh, Perfect Blood, 
tenth in the series. I'm so sad that this is ending, but this book has so, shown so much growth, not only with Rachel, but Trent. Trent is one of my absolute favorite characters. Rachel is beyond awesome, but Rent, Trent is one of my favorite male characters in this book. I love Jinxie too, but that's beside the point. Um, he has grown so much, whether he's being the villain, the, um, the savior, the, uh, whatever he is, he's just awesome. And, um, like I said, I love this series and I cannot wait to see how it ends, but I'm going to be so sad when it does. But, um, and it is optioned to be on, um, a series on the CW. So I'm looking forward to that and I so hope I get to see it. Um, on the TV, so it will be, I don't watch a lot of TV, but this will be something I watch every week. So, um, this again, five out of five for Perfect Blood and Kim Harrison. You did it again. Thank you. I loved it. Also, another Kim Harrison graphic novel I read. Um, love this too. I expected it to be the, like the first book. It's called Blood Work, but it is like a prequel and it's an original story to the series. Um, it kind of starts out where Ivy and um, uh, Rachel meet like, and become partners. And the only thing I didn't like about this book is, I love the graphics, but um, the only thing I didn't like was Ivy. I don't think they made, they made her as attractive as I think she should be. And I'm trying to find a good picture that I can actually show you where she is because I think they could have done such a much better job on Ivy. I did not picture her to look like this. Rachel is great, but Ivy, I don't know if you can see that. That is not how I pictured Ivy. Not at all. I mean, granted, she's got a mean face on, and I mean, even up here, I mean, as you go up, that, I don't picture Ivy to look like that. And I guess, you know, I know it's every artist's rendition, but definitely awesome storyline, great, um, addition to the series, but I don't like Ivy. Okay, my next book is Legend by Mary Lou, and I know a lot of people were comparing this to The Hunger Games. I don't see any comparison, comparisons other than it's dystopian, and it has a guy and a girl in it. Um, a lot of people didn't like June in this book, and I figure, I'm not really sure why they didn't like her, but I enjoyed her. I think June is a very strong character. I think she stands up for what she believes in. Whether um, people think she's wrong or right, as long as she believes in it, she's going to fight for it. And I think that's what makes her strong because um, whether uh, she will go against people that she cares about because that's what she believes in. But once her beliefs change and once if she's shown that she's wrong and, she, and she's willing to own up to it, she's such a strong person that she will make those changes that are necessary. She's the type of person that will fight no matter what what she believes in to be right is what she will fight for and that makes her so much stronger than a lot of characters that I've read in a lot of books and a lot of people I know so I really enjoyed June I like Day but June to me is just one of those characters that has so many strengths that I think people don't um, fully um, understand her character because it really takes a strong person to go against everything and everyone just to fight for what you believe in. And especially when you've been raised a certain way, to go against all of that um, because you find out it's wrong. It just, I love it. So this was a really, really good book. I gave it 4 out of 5. And again, the reason why I gave it 4 out of 5 is there's a bit, there's bits and pieces where it's a little slow, but mostly it's a great story. And then um, the other reason is because it's a first in a series and it's laying the foundation for further books. So, can't wait to see what else uh, Mary Lou throws at us. Great book. Um, and last but not least is another pan by Daniel and Vina Nanari. Nanari? 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 Nanari. Ugh, I hope I said it wrong. I hope I didn't butcher it too bad. Um, but loved, loved, loved another Faust. A little confused on another Faust. Um, there were some issues with that because I didn't quite understand everything in the book. This one has the whole Peter Pan and Wendy and all the elements from Peter Pan's story without the Tinkerbell fairies and all that other stuff. But there is a dark force in this book. There's tons and tons of dark twists, tons and tons of um, unexpected turns. But you do get the Peter and Wendy thing. You do get the Peter and Wendy storyline. 
Um, but maybe not necessarily in the way you would think from the regular Peter Pan books or just the way you might liked it. But I love this series. It isn't like, ugh, I can't say it's like one of my top ten or anything like that. But as far as just having a book that I enjoy to read and an enjoyable twist on fairy tales that I love or stories that I love, this is one of those, those series. They do an amazing job. Their writing is amazing. There's um, so many elements in this series, even from another Faust. But this one, especially because they have a lot of um, Egyptian um, history in it, and they it talks about Nefertiri, Nefertiri uh, no, Neferet, and it talks about different things from things that happened in Egypt, um, Egyptian lore. Love this book. Really, really good. I gave it four out of five, um, mainly because, mostly because I'm, I, the ending wasn't exactly what I expected it to be. It was great. It was a really good ending and it ended well. But, um, I, I don't know. I think I expected it a little different. But it was an amazing read, an amazing ride. And this was a journey that I know I'll read and go on again because this story was really good. Okay. That is all of my books and all of my reviews. If you guys have any thoughts or comments, Leave me, a li um, leave me a link below, leave me a comment below, um, anything you want. If you got any questions or any books you want me to check out that are contemporary, that you think might be better, or just books in general, let me know. And um, if you want something answered, ask me a question, then I'll answer it. And then if not, just leave, leave your comments below and I'll get back to you. Talk to you guys. Thank you so much. See you next month.